Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to test for sequential mediation using Andrew Hayes' process macro. Um, this is uh, the, the uh, model that we're going to be working with in the current demonstration. And uh, this was actually drawn out in uh, Amos, but uh, I really like the, the graphical user interface and the tools there. So I, I basically just drew out the conceptual model in there. Uh, and this is what we're essentially uh, testing uh, using the macro. So uh, first of all, um, to, uh, to obtain the macro, if you haven't already done so, go here to this website, uh, uh, www.processmacro.org backslash download.html. And so you're going to download uh, the macro and, and install it either onto SPSS or SAS. Um, all of my analyses are going to involve uh, SPSS, so uh, that's what we're going to be looking at uh, as we move forward. So um, keep in mind that uh, with the macro, it's actually, it contains a number of different sort of um, um, sub-processes um, where you can run a, a variety of different types of models. So, uh, the, you know, this model right here, this is just one of a number of different types of models that can be um, tested using uh, the macro. So, uh, and, and in particular, this is basically model number six uh, using the process templates. Uh, if you want to look at the process templates a little bit more closely, you can go to this website right here. Um, and um, this is uh, it right here. And basically what you'll do is um, you can kind of scroll through. This is kind of an advertisement for his book, which is quite good. And uh, you, as you kind of scroll down, you can see that we've got uh, model one. That's the simple mediation model right there. Uh, they're giving you the conceptual and statistical diagram. Model two is moderated uh, multiple regression, essentially, and so forth. And so what we're going to be working with, um, Model 4 um, is a, kind of a simple mediation, and then uh, Model 6 is what we're working with now. And you'll see that I've drawn it out to, to mimic uh, what you see in terms of the template. I've just added uh, specific variable names. So you'll notice right here that um, this is a two-mediator uh, two model. So in other words, uh, looking at this model right here, we're, we're um, essentially modeling the, the predictive relationship between X and Y, and you'll see there's an M1 and an M2 right here. So the effect of uh, X on Y is modeled as flowing through M1, so there's a, a path right here and a path right here, uh, through M2, path right here, path right here, and then through the, the sequence of the two uh, mediators. So. Uh, essentially, uh, we have um, this path right here included, and so the sequence would also incorporate uh, the flow through both of the mediators. So that's what we're basically testing out. Uh, if you use uh, model number six, you can also test more complicated models. There's model six involving three mediators. Uh, then you've got uh, even model six with four mediators. So you can see it starts to kind of look like spaghetti after a while, but uh, we're going to mainly focus on uh, demonstrating this model right here, and you can certainly add on uh, as needed. So in this demonstration, we've got uh, a set of variables. Um, you know, this is basically um, uh, kind of simulated data or, or uh, created for this demonstration. And what we have is a, a variable uh, mastery, so, so students' levels of mastery goals, their level of anxiety, uh, interest in uh, school or the subject matter, and then achievement. And so within this particular model, uh, we, we're essentially proposing that mastery um, has an impact on achievement. Uh, here, this is a direct effect right here, uh, and then we also indirectly through uh, several means. So we have mastery to anxiety, and then anxiety to uh, achieve, uh, mastery to interest, and uh, with interest to achieve, and then mastery to anxiety, anxiety to interest, and interest to achieve. So that's basically what we're uh, looking at. So I have the data in uh, this file right here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll run the analysis um, using the macro. So we're going to go to Analyze, go to Regression, and, and make sure that you've installed the macro. If you, if it's not, if you haven't, then you're not going to be able to run it. So make sure that you install the macro. And you'll see it says process, uh, Andrew Hayes right here, and um, and we'll just kind of walk through it. So we've got the variable achieve as my y variable. Uh, we've got mastery as the x variable. 
And then you'll see in this box, we've got, it says mediators. So be sure that you enter the mediators um, in the order in which they're gonna appear in the model. So, um, so I would, uh, since anxiety is the uh, first mediator, the M1, I'm gonna add that first, and then I'm gonna add in interest as the M2. So now you'll see that we have this little drop down, drop down uh, right here, and we're gonna go mo to model six. And you'll notice the default for confidence intervals is a 95%. Uh, we've got 5,000 bootstrap samples because we're uh, essentially uh, using bootstrap standard errors and, uh, and confidence intervals um, So uh, to, uh, in our analysis to, to uh, test for the statistical significance of an indirect effect. Um, okay, so we'll click on OK. And it usually takes a few seconds uh, to run. And it's all ready. So now as you're going down the output, first of all, notice it, you're going to see a series of regression analysis. So the first regression is uh, the outcome variable is anxiety. And you can see that we have mastery predicting anxiety. So the regression coefficient is negative 0.25, and uh, it would be deemed as statistically significant in the um, at the conventional 0.05 level. So that regression coefficient is negative 0.25. Um, when we scroll down now, we see the outcome variable uh, is interest. So this is M2. So the previous one was M1. This is M2. And we've got mastery. Um, there's the regression coefficient. Uh, and it's statistically significant. And, but anxiety is not a statistically significant uh, predictor of the interest variable. So um, now we'll move down and we'll scroll, scroll down to um, the next uh, regression that has achieved. And so in this case, uh, in this model, we've got mastery uh, emerging as a significant positive predictor, um, anxiety, uh, a negative uh, predictor, and it's not statistically significant. And then we have interest, uh, which is statistically significant. So basically, <clears throat> each of these regressions are testing uh, direct effects in the model, and then the information from those direct effects are essentially uh, computed into indirect effects. So as we scroll down, you'll see, uh, it, first of all, it says a uh, direct effect of, um, of X on Y. So the direct effect of X on Y uh, is, um, is this right here, which is the mastery. And so this information is, um, is um, um, essentially presented uh, right here. So it's uh, basically, uh, it's basically redundant. So there's our t-test right there and um, you know, our t-test. So you can see all those numbers are the same. Then you've got indirect effects and there's an indirect effect key. And this is, this is why uh, you wanna make sure that you've entered your variables in the correct order. So you'll see that uh, the first indirect effect is mastery uh, predicting uh, anxiety, which in turn predicts achieve. So uh, right here, the indirect effect, this first one, uh, that's the, regret, that's the uh, indir indirect effect. Uh, bootstrap standard errors, and then you've got bootstrap, uh, basically 95% uh, confidence intervals with the lower and upper bound. So this is the 95% confidence interval for that first indirect effect. And uh, basically the null hypothesis is that the indirect effect uh, is equal to zero in the population. So that's essentially our null right there. And then the alternative would be that it is uh, non-zero. So I'll just say H1 and we'll just say IE is uh, not uh, equal to zero. And so in this particular case, you can, so if zero, if the null falls between the lower and the upper bound, then we would maintain the null concerning that indirect effect. If zero falls outside the lower and the upper bound, then we would reject the null. So in this particular demonstration right here, zero falls uh, within the uh, lower and the upper bound. So if zero falls between negative 0 0.0176 and 0 0.05, Seven, six. So we're going to maintain the null when it comes to uh, the indirect effect of um, mastery on achieve uh, through anxiety alone. Then we can look at the second indirect effect right here, and this is the coefficient. You can see that uh, there's our standard error, and um, you can see in this case that um, zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound of that confidence interval. So what that tells us then is that um, the indirect effect through 
the interest variable alone is statistically significant. Um, the last uh, one is uh, the indirect effect of mastery on achieve via the sequence of anxiety and interest. So that's the third indirect effect. You can see that it's a positive coefficient, and um, but you also see that the null of zero falls between the lower and the upper bound. So in other words, the third indirect effect is not statistically significant. So what, the, what does this tell us? Well, basically, if we kind of go back to our uh, diagram right here, what this tells us then is that uh, we, we do have, you know, based on the regression results, the direct effect um, is, you know, mastery on achieve. That is statistically significant. And the indirect effect of mastery on achieve through the mediator interest is statistically significant. But none of the other proposed uh, sequences are significant. So the, uh, you know, the effect, the indirect effect of mastery on anxiety leading to achieve um, um, in this particular case, um, that you know, the indirect effect with anxiety mediating alone uh, is not statistically significant, and the indirect effect of mastery on achieve via the sequence of anxiety and interest is not statistically significant. So, um, one other little uh, piece that I want to mention is that we also have uh, the total indirect effect, uh, and so basically. Uh, this is just um, uh, computed by, you know, summing uh, the, the specific indirect effects together. So that's all this is. So if you want a significance test of the total indirect effect, uh, which uh, reflects uh, the, the sum of, of all the indirect effects that are being uh, calculated, uh, then we have a significance test for that. So if zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, then we would uh, reject the null. So overall, uh, there does appear to be significant uh, mediated effect of mastery goals on achievement. Uh, however, it looks like it boils down to uh, uh, interest doing all of the work with respect to the mediation. So that concludes this discussion.